betting on things that will never change. I read an amazing article recently, um, which had an interview with Jeff Bezos, and they asked Jeff, you know, what do you see uh, it's going to change in the next 10 years? And he said, you know, that's a cool question, but how come nobody ever asks me what's not going to change in the next 10 years? Because I think that's a way better question, he said. And when he was talking about his business, he said, you know what, let me tell you what's not going to change in the next 10 years. People are still going to want cheaper prices, they're going to want faster delivery, and they're going to want uh, a large, vast choice. So, so let me tell you this, I, Amazon is working great and we put a lot of energy into these three things because he said he just cannot imagine a scenario where somebody would come to him in 10 years and say, Jeff, listen, Amazon is great, but I kind of wish the prices were a little higher or the choice was a little smaller or the delivery would be a little bit slower as well. So he said, because I was so sure that those three things will definitely stay the same 10 years from now, we put all of our energy into it and it worked really, really well. So I guess the moral of the story is that everybody's looking for what's gonna change, what's gonna change, and never really um, stops to think about what are those things that are not going to change even 10 years from now and put a lot of money and energy into that because that seems like the smarter investment. Now look, I'm not saying change is bad. Change is definitely great. But change is difficult because if you look at it from a, an investment point of view, for change to really materialize, you need to first of all find investors that are willing to invest into this change early before everybody sees it. Um, you need to start changing consumer behavior towards the change that you're trying to achieve. And that's again, very difficult because changing consumer behavior is one of the most difficult things to do. And if you are investing to something that's changing, it's very, very likely that it will keep changing. So you invested into something, you're ahead of everybody else for two years, two years pass, it's obsolete. You have to invest into this change again and again and again. So while investing into change can be very successful, it's kind of like those bursts of successes. You know, you go up and then down, you have to wait, and then you go up again and you go down. So it's very, very difficult to get a stable investment out of something that keeps changing. I'm not against change. I think it's not so black and white. Let me give you an example. Uh, Warren Buffett, who's one of the investors that's typically really anti-change. He likes really, really stable things. Look, he bought a, an insurance business called Geico about 65, 66 years ago. Now, the reason he bought this insurance business was that he thought that going uh, with insurance, going directly to consumer will always be cheaper than going through a broker. That was the idea uh, uh, that he had when he bought it. And you know, it's still true today. 66 years later on, sure, insurance is now sold on iPhones and iPads and they're using AI to calculate certain things, how to use float and so on. But the very idea behind it, the people who want cheaper insurance stay to this day. And that's why people like Warren Buffett I mean, and Jeff Bezos have been very, very successful. Now, I talked to a lot of um, VC guys, right? Venture capital is a very, very pop thing. And these guys really believe that change is everything. If you want to invest into things, you need to invest in into the next great thing. But you know, once we really dig down in our conversation and we talk to them about it, again, I brought them the same example with Warren Buffett, and they told me, you know what? No, we believe that the future of insurance is in better software, uh, crowdsourcing to make it cheaper. And then when I asked them a few questions, we really came to the point that better software, yes, but better software is simply uh, supposed to make the process of buying insurance simpler. Crowdsourcing, why? to make it cheaper. So the fundamentals behind what they're trying to do is not better software, it's just to make it easier to buy and cheaper to buy, which are once again, the same kind of ideas that we talked about that will be the same 10 years from today. So the whole point of why I'm rambling is this, when you think of a business idea, when you look in your business, don't always chase the greatest next potential technology that might you know, improve or change your business, the, ne the next quick fad that's gonna come and go. Look into things which will always be the same, that will not change. Put your energy and your money behind those and your 
far more likely to succeed. Now, if you want to know what those kind of things are, let me just give you just a few. So lower prices, definitely something that's always going to be true. Faster solutions to problem problems, um, more choices, uh, better comfort, things like entertainment, curiosity, they always work. Um, deeper human interaction, greater transparency, uh, higher social status, or increased confidence, trust, and just in general feeling good. Those are the kind of things that will always be true because they depend heavily on human psychology and just the way that humans have been uh, used to do things for hundreds and hundreds of years. So invest into those, put your energy behind those, and you're going to see a lot of success in your business. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe, hit the bell, and see you next week.